around and ask you, where were you? I mean, how did I get here before you did? I had a stop to make. Oh? What is it, Fred? Uh, I don't want to get into your personal life, nothing like that, you know, but I just was concerned about you. Oh, Fred, that's uh. very nice. Oh, I can tell you where I was. I was over at Mel's. And you told him about your visit with me? Yes, and I told him you said no. But Donna. Fred, <laughs> don't be sorry about what you said. You said the truth. You simply told me how you felt. Well, Donna, honey. But after I left you, I realized that no matter what you said, as long as I felt about you the way that I do, no matter what you felt about me, I shouldn't marry another man. What? <laughs> it was wrong of me to base my answer to Mel on your answer to me. I realized that I simply don't love Mel enough to marry him. So I told him I wouldn't marry him. You told him no? I told him no. Now, what is it you wanted to tell me? <laughs> Well, see, uh, I wanted to tell you that if you were getting married, I wanted to give you my best regard and, and good luck in your marriage. And that if you were getting to married tomorrow, I, I couldn't be there because I, I think this is it. I mean, I, I, I should be home in bed. <coughs> I, that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go home and get in the bed right now. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, if Lamont was just home, I wouldn't be lonesome. Fred, Fred, I'm coming to be with you. Huh? Mother, I'm here. I'm uh, going to spend the night with Fred. Uh, no, you're uh, not. Mother, he's very ill and he may need nursing care. Uh, I'll spend the night with him. Uh, Okay, thank you, Mother. You're welcome. I feel better now. Morning, darling. Did you sleep good last night? Oh, yeah. Wow, you know, you really fixed up this place beautifully. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about the way it looked last night. I usually keep the place pretty tidy, but I just uh, separated things because I was airing everything out. Uh-huh. Well, you know, uh, Aunt Esther told me this place usually looks like a junkyard, outside and inside. <laughs> yeah, well, that's Aunt Esther's sense of humor. Have you noticed that, that most people with a sense of humor look like they've been punched in the face by mean Joe Green? <laughs> Ooh, what is that I smell smelling so good? Oh, that's bean sauce uh, for the spaghetti. Uncle Fred, we having spaghetti for breakfast? No, honey, for dinner. Uh, bean sauce, spaghetti, collard greens, and spam almondine. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Uncle Fred, I can't eat here tonight. See, I'm meeting my roommates for dinner. Well, why can't you meet them after dinner? Oh, um, <clears throat> because uh, we have so many things to arrange and talk about and everything. Well, well, then, why don't you do this? Why don't you invite them over here? Uh, since I'm like your father here in Los Angeles, it'd be a pleasure for me to meet your friends. <laughs> uh, it'll be too much trouble, really. No, no, I'll just uh, make more sauce. That's too much work. No, I can handle it. I'll just add two more cups of water. <laughs> I don't understand this whole thing. Well, you might as well try to understand. It happens all the time. What about when, when Elizabeth Taylor left Eddie Fisher for Richard Burton? <laughs> and what about when Ingrid Bergman left her husband for that Italian fella, Mussolini? It was Rossellini. 
And anyway, those people are in show business. Well, junk business is like show business. If I got some junk, I got to show it, else I'm out the business. <laughs> then, it, then this whole thing is settled, huh? Well, just about. She's coming here tomorrow. She might as well come and see what her future home looks like. Hey, remind me to spray the place real good. Well, why? Is she moving in here? Not she, they. She has two little children. <laughs> Mrs. Edwards is young enough to have little children? What's her first name, Lolita? <laughs> well, Jackie and Onassis did it, so just say that we another Jackie and Onassis. <laughs> Living happily ever after on some Greek island. The old prune and his young tomato living on figs. <laughs> Listen, if you want to hear more about it or not, if you don't, I can drink my beer upstairs. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I want to know all the sordid details. Now, 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 when did you meet her anyway? I met her about a month ago in Ruby's Bar and Grill. <laughs> See, I was sitting at the bar on one end, and she was sitting down at the other end. And, and, and the bartender had just brought her uh, one of them draft beers, and she was licking the foam, trying to catch it, you know, before it got out on the counter. And, and we looked up at the same time. And it was as though no one else was in the whole room. I can believe that. She probably cleared the place, lapping up beer on the bar. Listen, I got acquainted with her, and we found out that we were both lonely. I thought you would, I thought you like the idea of me having some female companionship in my waning year. What's wrong with that? You want to know what's wrong with it? The smell of nail polish and cold cream all over the place. The wash basin always full of stockings and stretch pads hanging all over the bathroom. You like that? I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's better than the smell of foot powder and your sweat socks hanging over child curtain. And, and you say she's got little children? That's worse than having a dog. You're gonna be stepping in peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day. You still don't understand, do you? I said that I wouldn't even tell you because I didn't even know if she was gonna accept me. But she did. Yeah, she accepted me. I, I, I really thought you'd like the idea of me having a female companion because that way you wouldn't have to worry about me at night leaving me here by myself, you know? And there's nothing wrong with having a female companion. They're very important. You important too, son, but what I mean is, you know, if you don't want me to, you know, if you think it's a bad idea, then I'll give her up. What? Yeah, I'll give her up. I mean, you're my only son, Lamont, but I know I owe you something, and I appreciate everything you've done, but I, I'll give her up if you just say the word. I love her, but I'll give up for you if, if you don't uh, want me to have her, I'll quit her. Because I love you too, but I love her, but I'll give her up. I love her. <laughs> look, look, Pop, I was only kidding. Now, if you want to get married to some young chick, go ahead. You got my blessing. Hey, you really mean that? Sure. You say she's coming here tomorrow night? Yeah, she's, com she's coming here to meet you. And, and then, you know what I'm going to do? I, I think I'm going to take her somewhere nice for dinner. All right, well, listen, don't worry about a thing. I'm going to be nice to her. Now, you better go to bed because it's getting late. Yeah, okay, son. And, and thanks an awful lot, it's yeah? all right. Hey, here you go, Pop. Uh, hey, listen, sit down, son. Uh, no, I'm not gonna eat. See, I got a date. No, this is only take a second. All right, what is it? Well, I don't want you to think I forgot you. Hey, I know you didn't forget me, Pop. But I mean, I want you to know that aside from all those little things that I gave everybody, I want you to have all the rest. See, I leave you the entire empire and the full respect of the emperor and all the emperor's love. That's in your will? That's in my heart. Oh, hey, you're That's you, W. Oh. Here you go, Pop. Hey, thanks, son. Hey, can, can you put ice cube in this cooler for me? Pop, you don't cool my noodle. Everybody knows that. You're right. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm really proud of you, Pop. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, son, that's all right. No, I, I mean it. I'm really proud of you. I know, please. I mean, just tell me more. <laughs> the fact is that there aren't too many 68-year-old men who would go back to school to get their high school diploma. Well, it never bothered me until you were born, son. Then, right then and there in the maternity ward, I decided to get it. And so, lickety-split, 37 years later, you did it. Well, better late than never. 
Pop, how would you feel about a man my age saying I love you to his father? Oh, well, I never liked that sort of thing. See, I believe that feelings between older people should be kept inside and not spurted out like mush or sugar or... Uh, I love you, Pop. I love you, son, or syrup. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll never say it. Me neither. Hey, well, look at him. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> 